we are here with Eric Winter and these people who are part of the Windrush Foundation are so lucky to have your experience here. So tell us a little bit about what you've been talking them through this morning. Um, we've been working on arena eventing and training and how to develop the horses at, through the training you do. So I, I'm a course designer and everything I do within that course design role is about education of horses, about setting progressive steps up through the levels to hopefully produce stars of the future in riders and horses. And I feel that it's something that's slightly overlooked with riders that actually they study a lot on the dressage, they study a lot with the show jumping, and yet the cross country is the core of the sport and they don't really understand it. And I don't see how as a group of competitors, that, that that's the, the main part of it, that you can answer a question if you don't understand the question. So for them to understand my thought processes about it, about how I create horses to travel forwards and then look at their control, look at their balance, look at their riding position, I think that's really important and, and really to help them understand that process. It was really interesting this morning because you, you set up a, what became a treble effectively but at no stage did you talk about the, the pacing or the striding through that. You were very keen to focus on the way the horses were travelling. I think that a balance of rider and balance of horse, the actual distance between two fences is not that important. Riders can adjust as long as they learn to adjust. Um, the sport comes out of hunting, out of, um, it's called military in Europe, and, and that's because it came out of military guys taking packages across country and, and delivering letters. And that's about crossing the country. And the country, when two hedges were put out in the country, it wasn't put out because that was a level two stride distance or a level three stride distance. It was put out because two carts could pass. And so it's important to educate your horses to be adjustable and to be quick and, and to be quick in their shoulder and the way the horse is reacting for sure quick horses that learn to jump and learn to think for themselves and riders that learn to stay in balance are much safer. At the core of safety, it's not deformable fences. It's not um, technology that helps horses when they're in trouble. It's trying to keep horses out of trouble and trying to keep riders that have an ability to keep their horses out of trouble and can train their horses to be reactive and help the rider and the rider to be able to help the horse. So it's been really interesting here this morning watching the various exercises that you've set up or actually to be fair you didn't even set them no, up well, did the you? No the riders did yeah. Yeah so yeah. what were you wanting the riders to think about? Then? I wanted them, it's very difficult in an arena situation to set up uh, exercises that are relevant to cross country I think. I think people pe tend to set up little things that are very um, almost uh, laid out in, in such a deal, they're formulaic in the way that they do it and there's no variation and yet cross country is not like that. Cross country is about your soul being in with that horse and, and working with that horse and so I wanted to set up arena exercises that actually looked at that relationship between the rider and the horse and made them reactive rather than allowing them to come down on the perfect distance and to jump the perfect distance to another fence to actually make them mix it up so they came in a big pattern and then had to shorten they came in a slower pattern and had to lengthen so that the riders had to be much more uh, as part of the horse where where they really use their eye and their instinct to trust that to educate the horse and and for them to work with the horse and and that's where cross country should be i think in that relationship between horse and rider more than anything else you know as a show jumper or a dressage rider you can really train that cross country you know if you get over eight minutes on your first time on a horse you don't really know what that horse is going to feel like how reactive it's going to be it's about your horsemanship and horsemanship is something that's disappearing out of horses in every sport i think and it's something that we need to to chase to bring back that people 
feel a horse, that feel what it does underneath them and, and learn to develop those skills. And, and so that's what we've really looked at. Using arena eventing and exercises in a school during the winter, but in ways that it can teach you to be instinctive rather than ways that you can get off your horse, walk it 47 times and then say, that's five strides and then go and ride it on five strides. I want them to be able to jump in there on, on the one horse, they go on the five and on the other horse, they go on the six. So they can really develop that skill set that will keep them in good shape in the future and make them champions. What was really interesting here was with the same fences, but just by slightly changing their angle or their height, you could be working either with a, a novice five-year-old or an advanced um, three-star horse. Well, that's the same when we course design. You know, when, when I'm course designing, there's a progression. There should be a progression between each level that um, there are certain fences that, you know, the, the run into the water in a 90 centimetre class is very relevant to the horse that jumps the log into the water with a 180 drop at a five-star competition, you know, it has to start there. If you try and miss out a step, that always leads to, to problems. Actually, it's about, it's why it's important for course designers to stay at the level, because those levels should be progressive and they should build a whole picture that trains a horse to be everything you want it to be at championship level. I always think that at, at the core, my job is to create horses that are confident and positive and enjoy their job and look forward to going cross country and are good at it. And that's about education. And it, it's interesting you say, you you're talking about the championship horses. Of course, not, not every horse is going to make it there. And, you, and, you, and as a, there's these young riders need to learn. I heard you talking to them this morning about understanding the, the maximum capability of each horse that they're on. And there will be some that they will be disappointed by and four star may be their limit, or even three star may be their limit. It doesn't make them bad horses. You know, to me, it, um, a horse doesn't know. You know, people say, oh, he's so happy, he's a champion. Actually, he's not that fussed, whether he's a champion or he's, but if he's enjoying life, nothing gives me more pleasure than when we sell a nice horse to somebody who goes out and writes us a letter after three years that they've had fantastic fun jumping 90 centimeters with it. And they've really enjoyed it. The horse, when we, we buy a lot of three-year-old horses and break them and train them through and, um, that is to make them nice horses, you know, to make them nice members of society. And that's what I love about horses is actually they don't all have to be superstars to be, su to be super horses. They can be a superstar for somebody at 90 centimetres. They can look after somebody. They can enjoy life. And so you don't have to look at your horse and think, I must make this horse into a five star horse. Look at where it's well positioned in life. And some horses are born to be five star horses. They are braver and they're slightly, you know, some of them have a little bit of a psychotic nature and they, they thrive off of the work that happens with that. But much as a lot of us humans are not Usain Bolt, a lot of horses are exactly the same. They want to have a nice life and enjoy it. And to position those horses with the right person and the right owner, the right rider, that gives them a fulfilling life actually, that's as, as much part of being horses, but that goes back to horsemanship again, it goes back to that sort of relationship. <laughs>